morning and welcome to worship in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, where we see our Savior baptized in the River Jordan and we are comforted to know that he is united to us as we are united with him by our baptism in his death and resurrection. And because of that, we are a new creation. We live as God wants us to live under his grace, looking forward to life eternal. And we hear more about, more about our champion in the readings and in the sermon today. I want to apologize for those who are seeking a sermon copy, and I know it would happen on the day we have young ones. The children's corner is uh, not functioning. That's because our printer is not functioning. So thank you for bearing with us. We'll still have a children's message right here around the baptismal font. Uh, but uh, I do apologize for that inconvenience and that break from your usual routine this morning. We will follow the order of service, setting two in our blue hymnals on page 172 or printed for you in the worship folder. We begin with our first hymn, 377, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord. As you are comfortable and as you are able, please stand. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things which we should have done. 
Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be our redeemer and savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. For
us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep us who are baptized into Christ faithful to our calling as your children and make us heirs with him of everlasting life. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated, and I invite forward the children this morning for the children's lesson. We are going to gather. Please don't sit down, but gather around the baptismal font. here. What's this? Towel or washcloth. Got that. What's this? Soap or shampoo, the wonderful Johnson and Johnson, no tears, shampoo and body soap. What's this? You know what this is called? It's a scrub thing. Yeah, it's a scrubby. It's called a loofah. This is a loofah. And you put a little soap, soap in there. You lather it up, right? And you wash yourself clean all over your body. Maybe you use a few things different in the bathtub or in the shower. Maybe you enjoy your bath, your bath time. You get to play with the bath toys. Of course, moms and dads are happy because while you're playing in the bathtub... <coughs> You're getting what? Clean. Well, you're getting exercise too, but mainly you're getting clean, right? All the dirt that is in your skin and in your hair is coming off. All of the sweat from the day's play, if, if mom and dad say it's, it's necessary for you to take a bath that day and they weren't planning on it, all that sweat and all that smell is coming off and you begin to smell good. I know my boys, whenever they finish their baths, they, they still smell their clean hair once in a while. And oh, it smells so good to the parent because now they're all squeaky clean. These are all things that we use for our bath time. But did you know there's another way we get clean. There's a spiritual way that we get clean. Now, of course, I don't see any dirt on you this morning. You all look nice and tall and straight. You have smiles on your faces. I don't see any dirt. But what dirt do we have that needs to be cleaned in a special way? We have sin in our hearts. Sin blankets everything that we do. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. Everyone here is a sinner. And we sin every day. We get dirty every day. But who makes us clean? God. Jesus makes us clean. Jesus makes us clean by his precious blood. The Bible says the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Now, this is our baptismal font, and if you didn't visit one of these when you were a small child, you certainly visited another one for sure. In it, there is water, cold water. It looks like water. It sounds like water. I'm sure it tastes like water. But when you were baptized, that was the first time that God made you clean. When the pastor took water, sprinkled it over your head, and said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. And that's when the Holy Spirit entered your heart and made you clean before God. 
Now, is it the water that can do such things? Is there something special about this water in baptism, you think? Water is water, right? You drink water, you see water, you see it flow in the oceans and on the lakes. What do you think makes baptism, baptism? There are two ingredients. Do you know what they are? Water. And if I say something like, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, what is that? That's God's word. God's word has to be present in order to make baptism what it is, powerful and cleansing of our sins. So when the pastor said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, it's not the water that did such things, but the powerful word of God connected with the water that pronounced you clean and keeps you clean because you now live in the forgiveness of sins. You know that when you mess up, when you get angry at your siblings, when you throw a tantrum, you know you know that there's forgiveness waiting for you when you are sorry for your sins. There's forgiveness for you. You are made clean again by the blood of Jesus. You are made perfect, made perfect through baptism, through the blood of Jesus, those wonderful gifts of forgiveness and salvation and heaven are all yours. Hopefully soon you will get to see another baptism at this church or at the church where you normally are. Our last one was in November when we baptized twins and they became children of God. They became members of God's family just as you are. And they live under the forgiveness of sins just like you do, just like I do, and just like everyone here does. That is the cleansing power of baptism, the cleansing power of the gospel and the word of God that is presented to us. More powerful than soap. Of course, we can't see its cleansing power, but we know it happens in our hearts. We believe Jesus is our Savior and that we are his forever. All right. Well, I apologize that the kids' corner is not ready for you today because of our printing. But I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the service, and listen for Jesus' baptism. That'll be our gospel lesson today. Thanks for coming up. gather around the word of God on this baptism of our Lord where we celebrate our being united with him and we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah where God himself describes his servant champion who would come and rescue us from sin's darkness and then by inspiration of the Holy Spirit we are invited to a little of the heavenly conversation as God speaks to this called servant our Savior. Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I am placing my spirit on him. He will announce a just verdict for the nations. He will not cry out. He will not raise his voice. He will not make his voice heard in the street. A bent reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not snuff out. He will faithfully bring forth a just verdict. He will not burn out, and he will not be broken, until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his law. This is what the true God says, the Lord who created the heavens and stretches them out, who spreads out the earth and everything that it produces, who gives breath to the people on it and life to those who walk on it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness, I will hold out, I will hold on to your hand, and I will guard you. I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people, to be a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring the prisoners out from the dungeon, and to bring those who sit in darkness out of prison. The word of the Lord. 
We continue now with our Psalm of the Day, Psalm 45b, which is from our new Psalter and has been printed for you in the bulletin. We sing together. We continue now in God's word on this baptism of our Lord with the words of Acts chapter 10 as Peter realizes the covenant that Jesus created, the way that Jesus created to get to the Father full of grace and truth through him. It is for all, not just for the Jew, but also for the Gentile. And it goes out in the gospel word of God. Then Peter began to speak. Now I really am beginning to understand that God does not show favoritism, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. He sent his word to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we join in the gospel acclamation using the words appropriate for the epiphany season. is the light of the world. In him we have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Holy 
gospel appointed for this Sunday is the baptism of our Lord according to the gospel of Matthew chapter 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized by John at the Jordan. But John tried to stop him saying, I need to be baptized by you and yet you come to me. But Jesus answered him, let it be so now because it is proper for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John let him. After Jesus was baptized, he immediately went up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens were opened for him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on him. And a voice out of the heavens said, This is my Son, whom I love. I am well pleased with him. The Gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated as we sing our next hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Grace and peace to all of you, all of you who are baptized into Christ and have lived under that grace and will continue to live under that grace all the days of your life unto eternity. 
The lesson for consideration on this baptism of our Lord is the first lesson, the picture from Isaiah that is presented in chapter 42. Dear friends, have you ever seen the post on Facebook? So-and-so is looking for recommendations. It could be for a mechanic or repairman. It could be for a chiropractor or pediatrician. It could be for a, a restaurant or a home appliance. Regardless of, of what it is, the person who made the post is looking for help with something or looking maybe to make a change. And he or she is hoping that their best friends will give them the best of the best. They're hoping, hoping that whatever is suggested will meet their qualifications, will meet or exceed their expectations. Quick service, quality service, knowledgeable in diagnosis, prescribing the proper remedy, whatever the case may be, so on and so forth. At the end of the day, the hope is that you will be satisfied. Today, through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord presents his anointed one, the chosen one, the one who meets all of God's qualifications and expectations is presented to you, the one who knows what's at stake as your soul hangs in the balance, the one who will make you completely and eternally satisfied. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I am placing my spirit on him. He will announce a just verdict for the nations. Sounds very much like the gospel lesson we heard. This is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. What a sight it must have been to behold at the Jordan River, better than flashing lights or neon arrows, God's pronouncement over his son. It has not changed from Old Testament to New Testament, from one generation to the next. This is the one. This is Jesus, the servant God has chosen. The servant who, according to Isaiah, will announce a just verdict for the nations. That's the mission right there, to announce a just verdict for the nations. And who doesn't want things to be made fair, right? That's what we think of when we think of justice. Who among us hasn't cried foul when we've been wrong? Who doesn't want a valiant hero like an Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator or a Sylvester Stallone Rambo? Someone we can get behind, someone who has the power and the might to do what is right. Pure, simple, straightforward, that's all we need. Someone you can stand behind as he beats vicious evildoers to a pulp, right and left. And yet, dear friends, I hope that you realize that if God enacted that kind of justice as we picture it in our minds, as is his right to enact that kind of justice if he pleases, but do realize that no one of us would be left standing before Almighty God if he did that. All would stand opposed to his chosen one. All would deserve to be destroyed by a holy God. All would deserve death and spilt blood for payment of every single sin. But what is this? He will not cry out. He will not raise his voice. He will not make his voice heard in the streets. 
A bent reed he will not break, a dimly burning wick he will not stuff out. He will faithfully bring forth a just verdict. The servant, God's chosen one, the anointed one, comes not with might, but with gentleness. So softly and tenderly, it makes you wonder how this chosen one of God could possibly get anything done. It sounds as if he has no moxie. And yet this is exactly how Jesus accomplished everything. After Jesus was publicly anointed by his baptism, publicly anointed into his public ministry, he immediately was led into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He faced the devil directly, even though he had been tempted for many years before then. He faced the direct temptations and the direct might of the devil. And in case you forget the end of that account, he won, hands down, every single time with the word of God. And then, then he went looking. He went searching. Searching for those bruised reeds and those smoldering, burning wicks. He searched for people who were oppressed by their sins, people who falter under the power of sin and are browbeaten by all of its guilt, so browbeaten, in fact, that God shouldn't even look their direction. He should just leave them in the dust, leave them in the darkness. And yet Jesus seeks us out, each one of us out like a good shepherd, a good shepherd that he is. And when he finds a smoldering wick, when he finds a bruised reed, what does he do with it? Does he trample on it as, as sins would deserve? Does he snuff it out and cry, shame, shame, shame? No, he doesn't do that. Jesus brings healing. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Isn't that what you want, dear friends? Isn't that what you crave today and always? Someone who doesn't kick you when you're down. Someone who reaches out to lift you from the pit of your guilt. Someone who is always with you there in times of distress. Someone who cares. Someone who understands. Someone who understands when you are frustrated with the same sins over and over and over again because you've fallen for the devil's smoke and mirrors a second time, a third time. Someone who cares when you're hurt. Someone who cares even when you're isolated. Someone who loves you. Someone who loves you in this dark world even though that dark world is full of hatred. Isn't that what you want? Friends, that's Jesus, God's chosen one, God's anointed one. He comes not in holy terror as the king of kings, but kind and good. And he brings healing. Healing that, of course, means justice for the nations. You see, Jesus could not be ignorant of any part of his mission. In order to bring us justice, it meant that he would have to face the holy justice of God. It meant that he would have to face all of God's wrath for every single sin that was ever committed. It meant steely determination not to turn his head from Jerusalem. It meant steely determination to make sure that he ascended that lonely hill of Calvary. 
enduring insults, enduring all suffering along the way, not to turn away from the cross, to be lonely and forsaken. It meant spilling his blood in the name of holy justice so that by his blood you stand purified from all of your sins. Jesus knew this plan. Jesus accepted this plan. As we read on in our lesson, he will not burn out. and He will not be broken until he establishes justice on the earth. That's the goal. It will be reached. And Jesus knew the cost to himself to carry out this plan. And yet he didn't cry out. He didn't rise up and shout, it's not fair. He didn't raise his voice. As Isaiah says in another chapter, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. Like a sheep, before his shears are silent, he did not open his mouth. All this, all this he did gently, all this he did humbly, all this he did willingly so that God's verdicts, God's legal verdict to you and the world for sin should be not guilty. So that you and the world might be spared the justice of God's anger and, exper and experience instead the justice of God's mercy and grace. That's justice that the island nations can take heart in. Though that's the justice that people beyond the nation of Israel can rejoice in and take comfort in. The coastlands can rejoice. Everyone, <laughs> everyone can rejoice as they learn about the teachings of God and who he is. That's the justice, friends, that you have, either sitting in the pew right now or watching online from at home. This is the justice of God's mercy and grace you have right now. Justice that you couldn't manufacture no matter how hard you tried. Justice that comes not from a Rambo or a Terminator or other action hero of your imagination, but from a willing servant a willing, humble servant who is revealed as the one and only Son of God. He knows the mission. He knows its requirements. He knows the expectations. It's all there in the first verses of our reading. This is the Lord's anointed one, the Christ. However, not only do we get this description, not only does the Lord God describe this servant, describe this Savior to us, as I mentioned at the lectern, in these last verses we get a little peek of some heavenly conversation as God now speaks to that servant Savior. And in this speech, if you will, he affirms the call of that Savior the vocation of that Savior to save souls. This is what the true God says, the Lord who creates, creates the heavens and stretches them out, who spreads out the earth and everything that it produces, who gives breath to the people on it and life to those who walk on it. I am the Lord. I have called you to righteousness. I will hold on to your hand and I will guard you. Again, we see that call affirmed. This is exactly what Jesus the Savior was going to do from the very beginning. Jesus was going to save sinners. I have called you to righteousness, says God. Jesus was called to be perfect, even as his heavenly Father was perfect. Jesus, in setting aside full use of his glory and power, came into our world and was born, born of the Virgin Mary, born under the law of God. And Jesus, living under that holy law of God, kept every single dot, 
every single tittle, every single command, every single statute. And admittedly, this would be a hard thing to do. For being born, being born a human means facing all of the temptations, all of the selfish desires that a human being is prone to. It means facing the brokenness of a sin-filled world and being surrounded by it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and standing up under it. I will hold your hand and I will guard you, says the Lord. How many times in scripture, dear friends, how many times do we see Jesus equipped with the word of God, equipped with just the right word to fell Satan and his evil forces? How many times do we hear him ask his heavenly father that his heavenly father should be glorified by all the work he is doing? How many times... Was he rescued from a premature death, either by, either kept from being stoned or kept from being thrown off of a cliff because people were angry, so angry that they would commit murder? How many times did Jesus ask his heavenly father for strength, even as he had to drink the cup of God's wrath that was in front of him while he was pleading in the Garden of Gethsemane? How many times are we told angels came and strengthened him, that God fulfilled the request that Jesus made? And yet Jesus still went forward. Jesus went forward and completed the mission for you and for me. For as he says, not my will, Father, but yours be done. How many times did Jesus yield Yield to the care of the Heavenly Father, perfect in every way. How many times did he just rely, did he just trust in God alone? Every single time. Perfect, absolutely perfect, absolutely white as snow. Counter that with all the times that you and I have failed all the times that you and I have failed to rely on a Heavenly Father, all the times that we have not walked the path of righteousness, that's our Savior. That's what he was called to do, live the life we couldn't, and then give it up. Give it up so that there would be a payoff. I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people to be a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring the prisoners out from the dungeon, and to bring those who sit in darkness out of prison. You will be the covenant, dear son. You will be the binding contract between me and all the people. To put it another way, it's as if God the Father is saying what Jesus would later say during his earthly ministry, You are the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes to me except through you. This is my solution. This is my remedy. This is how it will be done. And you will not only draw your own countrymen, you will not only draw Jews to yourself, but also the Gentiles. You will be their light. You will be a light to the nations and they will be drawn to you and you indeed will set many a captive free. Dear friends, isn't that what you have right now? Right now as you're sitting here, right now as you're watching online, by the grace of God, you are part of that covenant. In fact, in Jesus, I could raise the question, what don't you have? You have a relationship with God, the most important relationship of all, restored to you. Through Jesus, you are the righteousness of God. And you were given that righteousness at your baptism. You were inducted 
in, brought into his family as an heir, a son, a daughter. As the Apostle Paul says, indeed, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have now clothed yourself with Christ. You've got the perfection that you could not secure on your own. You have the forgiveness that you could not win on your own. You have strength to live your life for God. You are freed from sin's dark dungeon and power. Jesus has opened your eyes to see what sin truly is. And what sin truly is, is sin. Instead of blindly walking into the messes that it creates, you see the red flags everywhere. You see the yellow caution tape that you didn't before. And you strive to stay away. Of course, it's not always easy, is it? It's not always easy. It's a daily battle between the new man of faith the new person that has arisen in you through holy baptism and wants to live for God. It's a battle between him and that selfish old Adam of a sinful nature. It's not always easy when you see the world having fun on the wide path of ignorance toward God. And we struggle to keep on the straight and narrow every single day. It's not always easy to not conform to the pattern of this world and be transformed as God would like us to be through his Holy Spirit. But that's when we call out. That's when we should call out to our Heavenly Father as our Savior did many times over for us during his earthly life. And through that servant Savior that we have, through that anointed champion, God says, I hear you, and I will help you. I will guard you. I will take your hand, because you are a member of my family. You are a son. You are a daughter of mine through Christ. And what does he do but give you the strength to resist temptation, guarding you against evil, keeping you from that wide path of destruction, and helping you walk the straight and narrow every step of the way, step by step and day by day, until that path of truth in Christ widens out into the glorious gate of heaven. And there will be eternal satisfaction, fully realized and fully given for you and for me. All of this is ours, not because we have earned or deserved it. No one earns or deserves the things of God. All of this is because we have a gracious and compassionate Lord who appointed a servant. All this is ours because God's chosen one has met all of the qualifications, has exceeded all of the expectations on our behalf. All of this is ours through that covenant of peace and forgiveness that is Christ. All of this is ours because of Jesus and his great love for us. Hail to the Lord's anointed forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. 
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Almighty and gracious God, creator and judge of all people, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for your concern to establish justice on the earth. We thank you for sending your servant, our Lord Jesus Christ, to bring justice to all nations. We thank you for identifying him as your beloved son by anointing him with the Holy Spirit and power at his baptism, for, reveal, for revealing yourself as the triune God at the baptism of our, of our Lord, we give you humble and hearty thanks. We confess, O oh Lord, that we have no righteousness of our own. We are truly thankful that in our baptism, you have given us forgiveness, life, and salvation. For forgetting the significance of our baptism, forgive us, O oh Lord for not measuring up to our high calling as your sons and daughters, we plead your mercy. We do not appeal to your justice for what we deserve, but we appeal to your mercy, and we ask that we walk in it all the days of our lives. As you anointed your son with the Holy Spirit and power, help us remember that in our own baptism, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Through him, we have the power to believe your holy word and receive the baptized Christ as our savior. Help us to establish and maintain justice on this earth. Grant that all people may hear this good news, that in Jesus Christ, there is peace. This we ask in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our brother, our Lord and savior, amen. Congregation may be seated as we sing our next hymn and the offering is collected and received.
Once more we stand and pray. Blessed Lord, you give us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated as we sing our final hymn. own child, I gladly say it, I am baptized into Christ, he because I could not pay it, gave my full redemption price, do I need earth's treasures many, I have one worth more. salvation free lasting to eternity
Good morning. And welcome to the Lord's house, one and all. A special word of welcome to all of our guests who are with us either in person or online today. I hope I didn't frighten anybody with a little bit of my wincing. I let the ushers know, and of course my dear wife knows, I have a little bit of back pain in the worst spot. So fortunately I was able to get through the service without much, much ado. And I know if I had toppled over, I would have given this congregation something to talk about for a while, but that, that did not happen, praise God. And hopefully that should be cleared up by the end, end of this next week here. Chiropractor appointment has been made. So. <laughs> uh, by way of announcement today, you see them all before you. I uh, just want to point out uh, the need for a congregation representative. That's on the back page there. Men's Alive Rally is also new. Um, a great time to be had uh, if you should sign up for that. Um, teenagers are also, also welcome, so don't let that stop you. Um, I think they take all the way uh, seventh and eighth grade, maybe even lower than that. Um, so fathers and their sons definitely welcome over here at the uh, dollar. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. What hotel is? Why can't I think of that? Thank you. Uh, no, not the hotel. Uh, the Double Tree. Thank you. Don't know why that escaped me, but there it is. Out at the Double Tree Hotel uh, in February. It was been there. Uh, it was in Midland last year after COVID, and now has come back. So please, gentlemen and uh, boys, please sign up uh, uh, at that website. Also, don't forget our Wells Basketball Men's League starts today in Saginaw, 6.45 game for Mount Olive and Bethel, taking on St. Luke's. So don't forget about that as well, and that will continue throughout the season. I do believe that's everything except to say that we have adult Bible class uh, coming up. And we will have resources, we will have worksheets prayerfully as we get our toner switched out. Just one of those things that happens first thing in the morning and you don't have enough time to, to fix it before service. So with that said, we'll look at our Wells Connection. President Mark Schrader. As we enter a new year, it's only natural to reflect on the previous one and to thank God for the amazing blessings he gave us. 2022 was a year when a number of synod-wide events and gatherings returned after the pandemic put them on hold. One of those gatherings, in fact the largest regular gathering of Wells members, was the Wells International Youth Rally in Knoxville, Tennessee, with roughly 2,000 attendees. We don't just want it to be an experience at a cool place. We want to equip them. Uh, we want to equip those that are called and those that are willing to lead them and, and deal with them at such a critical time in their ministry. In addition to the youth rally being back in person, so were events that show support for Wells Home, Joint, and World Missions, such as the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society Convention and Taste of Missions. To everyone in the pew, to everyone um, who gives offerings, gives prayers, sends a letter to a missionary, befriends a mission, anyone who does that, just thank you, because it, it, it does not go unnoticed. It is so, so appreciated, and I always felt like um, a number of times over the years, you know, that letter came at just the right time, you know, where you were struggling or having trouble with something, and, and it just showed up, and it's, it's super cool. So thank you very, very much. 2022 brought word of new ways that our church body is continuing to connect people who are far from God to their loving Savior. The first was the launch of a new world mission in London, England. Our God has been gracious and has given us a, a new life. I think the religious institutions that are kind of native to this country have lost their way in uh, a lot of senses um, and people are crying out for something more substantial. Also, Wells Home Missions announced the ambitious goal of starting 100 new mission congregations over the next 10 years 
so that we may, Lord willing, connect more people like Lauren in Atlanta to their Savior. Learning God's love and grace for you and compassion and forgiveness, it's freeing. It's freeing, and it opens your, it opens your eyes um, to a whole different way of living, to, to live life and look at life from a completely different perspective. With all those potential new home missions, we will need additional pastors, teachers, and staff ministers to lead and serve those congregations. Wells continues to provide a high-quality education system that encourages and trains the next generation of called workers. They have opportunities to go out into congregations and schools uh, to shadow a pastor, to learn from a teacher in the classroom, to really get that hands-on experience so they can say, I love this. I do not think we can overestimate the importance of this place. If we want the gospel to live on, not only for us, but our children and our grandchildren, and for those surrounding us in our communities and world. As local churches serve their communities with the gospel of Christ, Wells Congregational Services continues to provide resources so they can faithfully conduct their ministry. Without having that understanding myself from personal experience to know what it's like to be in the military and, and what are the best ways that we can serve them, I think that's just helpful to have those resources and, you know, I don't have to figure it out myself. Resources that help local churches connect with Wells members in the military as well as programs that help congregations build a bridge from children's ministries and schools to church membership. The purpose of telling the next generation is help a congregation have a plan. When they come, how do we connect with them? How do we build relationships? And then how do we connect them with Jesus? All of these various synodical ministries work together to allow us to carry out our calling as Christians, motivated by the love of Christ. This coming summer, our Synod Convention will be held at Michigan Lutheran Seminary to approve our ministry plan for the next two years. Topics that are scheduled for the 2023 Synod Convention include addressing the pastor and teacher shortages. These include the announcement of a significantly larger graduating class coming out of Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary and new initiatives out of Martin Luther College for teachers. A highlight of this year's convention is the official declaration of fellowship between Wells and two new church bodies, Iglesia Cristo Wells Internacional in Latin America and the Obadiah Lutheran Synod in Uganda. In Vietnam, the new theological training facility for the Hmong Fellowship Church will welcome its first class of students. This training facility was built to instruct leaders of the Hmong Fellowship Church who serve nearly 140,000 members with the message of God's free grace. It's clear that our Heavenly Father has great things planned for our church body for this new year. We may not yet know exactly what they all are, but we can be certain that wherever He leads us, He's able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine.
usually around anywhere um, on the premises. Uh, you want to just meet tomorrow at some time? Sure. Well, what time is good for you? Any time is good. Okay. I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Well, then how about, how about uh, 10 o'clock? Okay. 10 a.m. Right. I'll be right. Yeah, I'll be here. Sure. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, well, well, it comes and goes, doesn't it? Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Some other I know, but we don't want it to get that far. Hello, sir. We've got, uh, what is that, Pikachu there? Pikachu today? He's making a comeback. Come back he is. Doris, good to see you. Vicky. Boy, you guys.